Ja. So now you're the host, okay? All right. Can you see my slide? Uh, yes. Two slides, multiple slides. Yeah, okay. One minute. I'll just connect my other screen and I'll then change the sharing again. Just wait. Stop sharing. Again, I have to make, I have to take away the hosting from you because yes. it is not allowed. I have not saved it as multiple participants. Let me just make that. Uh, multiple participants can share at the same time. Okay, so now share screen. That's the screen I want you to see. Share screen. Uh, are you seeing the screen? Blue color. Blue color screen? Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, good. good. There you are. Okay, so this, this is the point when I wanted to start. And uh, because Bhushan wants to be host today, so let's put him host there, give him some practice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Can you see this? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, so because we are a very small group, uh, we can even talk to each other. So one by one, tell me. Tell me first, what are the two events in a cardiac cycle that you have to look for? Anybody can switch on the microphone and talk because this is good to understand if you talk it out. What are the two events that you that happen in a cardiac cycle? Come on, that's easy. Systole and diastole. Systole and diastole. Very good. Systole and diastole. Okay. So that's the important thing. And all of the cardiac cycle is with relation to the left ventricular system, as left ventricular system and diastole. Okay. So first concept is clear in your mind that everything that we are talking about and going to draw, the main thing you need to know is the ventricular systole and diastole. But in addition to this, there is only one extra systole which have one extra event which happens, which is the atrial systole. So let, just look at what I'm going to put up here. Okay. So systole. Okay. I told you there were stage one, stage two, a uh, phase one, phase two, which was 2A, 2B, phase three, phase four, A, B, C. Okay, this is what I said, phase one, where there's contraction and mitral and tricuspid valves are closed. Don't worry if you don't understand the slide, it will get clearer. Phase two is when the ejection is happening, it's 2A and 2B where aortic and pulmonary valves are open. Again, don't worry about this slide at all because it will become clear in a minute. And then there's diastole, relaxation, which is phase three, aortic and pulmonary valves close, and filling, which is phase four, which is ABC, mitral and tricuspid valve open. So if you look at it, there are seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You agree? seven phases yeah yes sir yes sir so we will give instead of call, calling them one two a two b three four a four b and four c we will call them phase one to phase seven okay so look look at the new way of looking at the cardiac cycle phase one which is originally four c if we are calling it as phase one which is atrial contraction okay phase two we're calling it isovolumetric contraction. The isovolumetric means the volume remains the same, but the muscle starts to contract. So the understanding of the phase two is that for the volume to be the same, the valves have to be shut. You agree or not? Because if the valves are open, the volume will either go up or down. So isovolumetric contract self-explanatory. The same volume, which means that the valves are closed. All valves are closed. There is no valve coming into the, either allowing blood to come into the ventricle or blood to go out of the ventricle. So the only thing happening in this phase is that there is contraction of the myocardium and the pressure in the ventricle is increasing. You understood this? Phase two. Now phase three is that the valves have opened. 
and the, when you talk about ejection it is usually the aortic and pulmonary valves which open so the myocardium starts to contract the valves open and blood is going out so first as soon as it opens there is a rapid ejection and then when the pressure because there's a big pressure difference between the aorta and the left ventricle as soon as the valve opens rapidly the blood flows it's like a it's like a pipe with a valve in the middle so as soon as the if there is nothing on the other side of the valve and you open the valve the blood the water will quickly flow first and then when the pressure on the two sides of the valve starts to equilibrium equilibrize then there will be reduced flow so first there is a jut of flow because on the other side the pressure is less because all the volume has gone away with the previous cycle and then suddenly you get into phase 4 where the valve is still open but the volume that is going has reduced so reduced ejection then iso volumetric relaxation again iso volume volume is the same which means valves have shut again but now the muscles are relaxing so what you are doing is creating a negative pressure okay when the valve is shut and the muscles are relaxing they are not contract they are relaxing so in the chamber the pressure is going to drop 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 because you are getting ready for the next phase where you want to suck the blood in so then you have phase 5 when the valve is open and what we are talking about is the eight mitral and the tricuspid valve so the mitral and the tricuspid valve open and because there is a negative pressure because of the previous phase it was same volume but relaxation there was a suction created or a negative pressure created within or low pressure created within the ventricle suddenly when the valve opened push a lot of blood came in and then the seventh one is reduced filling okay so far so good so just look at a pipe okay and pipe with two valves on one side on one side when the valve opened suddenly you pushed everything out then you slowed down the valve closed then this chamber relaxed reduce the pressure and then the inlet valve opened when the inlet valve opened suddenly fluid came in and then it slowed down okay so these are seven phases the same thing so 1 2 3 4 5 6 so if you want to draw a chart of cardiac cycle draw a horizontal x axis start drawing this start an x axis and draw a y axis okay and when you draw an x axis and a y axis on the x axis make seven chambers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 can you see this One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The first one is atrial contraction. So now this bump, which you are seeing, let's only look at the left ventricular pressure. Don't look at anything else. Only at the left ventricular pressure. So in the left ventricular pressure, you start with zero because that's the baseline, or slightly above zero. And the first bump that you are getting in a left ventricular pressure is because the atrium is contracting. yeah atrium contracted and the last 15% of the heart is of the filling is complete okay and then now coming to the systole now we've come into the systole okay so let's look at the phase so first one is atrial contraction now in an atrial contraction the mitral valve only concentrate on the left side forget the right completely just look at the left phase 1 which was phase 4c of the previous explanation is the atrium is contracted and 15% the last 15% of the blood came in okay atrial systole the sa node depolarized and the atrial muscle contracted and the last 15% of the filling happened look at the picture here and look at phase 1 Can you see phase one here? Let me show you. This is phase one. So atrial systole, SA node depolarized. Only look at the left side. Okay, aortic valve. Uh, sorry, the mitral valve is open. 
atrial contracted blood came in the last 15% of the ventricle is now full okay now look at what is happening in the second phase the the mitral valve is closed can you see this the mitral valve is closed the aortic valve is closed only concentrate on the left side let me go back one minute in phase one the mitral valve was open the aortic valve was closed correct come into the next one the aortic valve is still closed the mitral valve closed this now no more fluid can come into the left ventricle and because the sa node has already fired and the atrium has fired the action potential is going to go down the bundle of his and start going into the left ventricle so the left ventricle will start to contract so this is iso volumetric contraction same volume but muscle contracting so what will happen in the pressure to the lv it will start to go up see here it is starting to go up can you see this so in the phase two this is contracting this pressure is increasing and it is starting to go up so let's look at the activity what's happening in these phase two the av valves closed av meaning the mitral and the tricuspid okay the av is mitral and tricuspid valves have closed the aortic pulmonary valves are continuing to be closed because they were closed before and volume of the blood remains constant but the pressure goes up because the action potential has spread from the atrial muscle across the bundle of his to the left ventricle so now the left ventricle is starting to contract okay that's phase two so look down at this graph and see this is starting to rise dramatically can you appreciate that we are now entering into phase three in phase three what happens is the aortic valve opens only concentrate on the left side forget the right only concentrate on the left side the aortic valve suddenly snapped open and the ventricle squished pushed all of this fluid into there so this rapid rise of this will happen okay rapid rise and ejection is happening in this phase can you see this phase three ejection is happening this is called as a rapid ejection so the pressure in the left ventricle is now gone from zero to 120 the maximum pressure it has gone so phase three is called as the rapid ejection phase pressure in the left ventricle exceeds the pressure in the aorta and pulmonary artery so left and right so we are only focusing on the left the pressure in the left ventricle exceeds the pressure in the aorta as a result of which the valve opens and when the valve opens the blood gets ejected into the aorta that's the left side and the same thing happens on the right side the valve gets ejected into the pulmonary artery okay it's, it's a synchronous movement on the left and right side so did phase three become clear everybody give me give me a feedback i need a feedback okay because i need to understand your understanding this yes, is sir, clear. yes sir yes okay. sir yes sir so that is phase three now keep looking at that graph okay i've kept the graph and the images there and i'm entering now into phase four so this was phase three only look at the aortic graph on the phase four. So I'm entering into phase four. In phase four, the pulmonary, uh, the aortic valve is still open. Yeah. But the pressure between the aorta and the left ventricle is starting to equalize. If you look at the black graph, if you look at the black line here, that is the aortic pressure. So the aortic pressure is almost the same now initially it was higher and then it's almost the same as the left ventricle so the amount of blood that will flow from the left ventricle to the aorta will be reduced so this is called as reduced ejection phase four is called as reduced ejection where the aortic and the pulmonary pressures equalize with the ventricle does that make sense phase four this picture should represent it. So now yes, sir. you have equalized. Okay, you have equalized and you have come to the end of phase four. Again, because your pressure is equalizing, there will be a slight dip in the pressure. Yeah? 
okay so you have gone up to the maximum peak you're still continuing to uh, throw fluid into the aorta but now you're equalizing and start slowly starting to come down once you've come to that area then you get into phase five where now look at the aortic valve it is closed focus only on the left side aortic valve is closed the same is sequence is happening on the right side as well but we'll only focus on the left side so now aortic valve is closed the mitral valve continues to be closed so again it is iso volume iso volume because no more volume blood can come in or go out so the volume remains the same and the cardiac myocardium is reaching into the repolarization phase repolarization phase of the action uh, potential that is why i did the cardiac action potential first because if you don't understand the cardiac action potential you cannot understand what's happening in a cardiac cycle so in the first phase when there was contractility there was depolarization and then there was a plateau a sustained plateau which took you to the which took you through this the sustained plateau took you through this area and then now you are starting to reach a repolarization when you get repolarization the muscle will relax it starts to relax but when the muscle starts to relax there is no volume coming in so the pressure starts to drop you're creating a negative pressure imagine a canister with not with nothing inside it and then the volume is relaxing that creates a drop in the pressure and that is what is being represented here by this graph the pressure is dropping 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 can you see this pressure phase 5 is isovolumetric relaxation which means we are entered into diastole so phase 1 2 uh, phase 2 3 and 4 was systole because that's when the muscle was contracting phase 5 is diastole we have started diastole the aortic valve has closed the ventricular the mitral valve continues to be closed and the pressure within the ventricle starts to fall is the is phase 5 making sense now so valve the only thing only thing extra in a phase 5 is when the valves close when they close when the aortic valve close it creates a back pressure into the ventricle and creates a notch see this see this aortic thing so this closes is coming down and then the valve closed there so suddenly there was a slight elevation in the pressure in the aorta which is called as the diacrotic notch this is the diacrotic notch the diacrotic notch happens because of closure of the aortic valve the snap closure of the aortic valve suddenly increases the pressure and you get this little bump in the tracing this bump in the tracing is called as diacrotic notch and it is most visible on the aortic side not so much visible on the ventricular side but it is more visible on the aortic side so it's in the aortic tracing uh, that you will get this diacrotic notch not in the lv tracing okay and so phase 5 you are dropping the pressure dropping the pressure dropping the pressure up to this point okay and at this point now look you are ready to enter phase 6 which is still part of diastole so when you enter phase 6 suddenly the mitral valve is opening when the mitral valve opens because the pressure here is very low in fact lower than the left atrium it comes down tries to go down to zero whereas left atrium continues to have a 5 to 10 mm of pressure because of that differential of the pressure suddenly blood will flow from the left atrium into the left ventricle have you understood phase 6 so this is the filling phase of diastole where the atrial where the aortic uh, where the atrio ventricular valve which is the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve reopen and there is rapid filling so first there is rapid filling but the filling is passive there is no contraction happening here 
the atria is not pushing the blood into the ventricle it is the negative pressure which the ventricle has created during isovolumetric relaxation that the blood is suddenly moving from the left atrium into the ventricular so it is a passive ventricular filling you understand that word why we are saying passive ventricular filling because atrium is not contracting the blood is flowing because of the pressure differential between atrium and the ventricle okay and so the low atrial pressure due to suction effect causes uh, it's actually low ventricular pressure due to suction effect causes rapid filling so that is phase 6 phase 6 okay so now you've gone zero and now filling is starting to happen so your pressures are starting to you know equilibrize and slightly rise okay and then you enter enter into phase 7 phase 7 is called as reduced filling because now the pressure between this and this is equalizing so the amount of blood between the left atrium and the left ventricular that will flow is a slow rise okay so slow rise so there is reduced filling okay so you you this gradually fills up till you reach end of phase 7 but diastole has not yet finished diastole actually finishes after the atria contracts do you understand that so after the atria contracts is the finishing of diastole so you come back to phase one that is why this phase five six seven and one these are all diastole two three four is systole that is why we use the phase one two a two b three four a b c because three and four a b c are diastole it is not systole can you see that in this diagram is it making sense what i'm saying to you did you understand yes. this or no yes huh? that yes, is why sir. when we say 4c because this is diastole it is not systole it's still diastole that is why the word 4c is used in in physiology books they use the word 4c 1 2a 2b 3 4a 4b and 4c okay but explanation wise you can directly divide it into seven phases but you must remember that phase one is not systole phase one is still diastole though the atrium is contracting and adding the last 15 percent so this phase from five onwards first the rapid filling and then the reduced filling contributes to 85 to 90 percent of the filling of the left ventricle and the last 10 to 15 percent comes with the atrial contracting so the valve is still open and the atrium so having come to this point i'm quickly going to go back to the first phase again to tell you the next cycle okay so just one second i'll just quickly go back to the first phase to show you the next cycle so you finished the previous cycle and the next cycle began here okay so you finish the phase seven of the next cycle of the previous cycle and then the next cycle began with atrial systole where the aortic the uh, mitral valve is still open the atrium is contracted the sa node has now depolarized and caused the atrial muscle to contract and blood is starting to flow through for 15 percent of the filling the next step will be the valve will close the valve is closed the, then the action potential is now spreading from the bundle of ease down to the left ventricle the muscle has started to contract but the mitral valve and the aortic i'm going fast now to tell you the cycle so the mitral valve and the aortic valve are still closed the ventricle is contracting the press the volume in the ventricle remains the same the pressure suddenly starts to rise this is called as isovolumetric contraction of the ventricle the aortoventricular valve which is the mitral and the tricuspid are closed uh, the aortic and the pulmonary valves are continue to be closed from the previous cycle it's part of the previous cycle 
and the volume remains same and then the contraction happens and the pressure rises you immediately get into the next phase when the pressure in the left ventricle overcomes the pressure in the aorta the valve opens the aortic valve opens and quickly blood gets flowed that's called as rapid ejection the rapid ejection phase pressure in the ventricle exceeds that in the aorta and the pulmonary artery the aortic and the tricuspid valve open and blood is forced into the aorta and the pulmonary artery phase 4 is reduced ejection because at this stage there is now equilibrium uh, there is equilibrium between the left ventricle and the aorta and so the blood flow is reduced we enter into phase 5 where now the aortic valve is closed the pulmonary the mitral valve was still closed from before and now because we are entered into the repolarization phase of the cardiac muscle so the muscle starts to relax but the volume remains the same because the volume remains the same and the muscle is relaxing the pressure within the left ventricle starts to drop dramatically and it starts to come down as the ventricular uh, pressure comes down uh, as as the aortic valve closes there's a little uh, push back into the aorta which is called as a diacrotic notch having done that you enter into the rapid filling the rapid filling is because the mitral valve has opened there is a pressure differential between the mitral uh, between the left atrium and the left ventricle the left ventricle pressure is lower than the left atrial pressure so in phase 6 there is rapid filling the mitral valve has opened blood is quickly being pushed into the left ventricle okay so very quickly the left ventricle starts to fill as soon as you do that you enter into the phase 7 phase 7 is reduced filling where there's equilibrium of the pressure between the left atrium and the left ventricle as the rate of flow of volume uh, across the left uh, across the mitral valve decreases till you reach 80% and this is end of phase 7 and then you are ready for phase 1 which is the atrial contraction against an open mitral valve if this makes sense <laughs> yes sir give, give me feedback yes, quickly now yes sir yes, yes sir so this is exactly what you have to do as yes. i said the first time you sit with these slides you go slowly 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 over each page 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and then come back to one which is still sisterly and go fast because that is how the heart beats it beats 7123456 uh, 7123456 7 or uh, 4c 1 2a 2b 3 4a 4b 4c but the remaining part is diastole and 4c is also diastole so it's not that the cardiac cycle starts at diastole you understand that the cardiac if you want to differentiate systole and diastole then you must understand that phase 2 is the start of systole but if you want to understand filling or you want to understand a graph then you can put uh, 4c as the at the start of the cycle it's a continuous cycle so it doesn't matter what you put at the start but this is just the easiest way because this is the standard way which everybody teaches so this is how the tracing is made so once you understand the left ventricular tracing where you know this bump uh, is because of the atrial atrium contracting and then this is isovolumetric contraction here the aortic valve opens and suddenly there is rapid project ejection out and then there's equilibrium equilibrium of the pressure between the aorta and the pulmonary uh between the uh ventricle and the aorta so there is reduced ejection and then when there's reduced ejection the the aortic valve shuts down so the uh, shutting down of the aortic valve is actually seen on the atrial aortic trace but not on the ventricular trace and then it gradually this is isovolumetric relaxation you are relaxing 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 at this stage your pressure has got it is it has gone below the left atrium so the mitral valve opens when the mitral valve opens initially you have reduced you have rapid filling and then you have reduced filling so look at the filling now okay the same explanation but look at the filling now look at the second graph 
This is the volume of the left ventricle. So the last 15% filling is because of atrial contraction. Look at the volume. The last 15% filling is because of the atrial contraction. Okay? This maximum volume is called as left ventricular and diastolic volume, which means that the ventricle is completely relaxed and the atrium is contracted. So left ventricular and diastolic volume is here at the start of that isovolumetric contraction. Yeah, because left ventricle has finished the diastole. But because it's isovolumetric contraction, the volume remains the same. It's a plateau then. And then here the aortic valve has opened. And because aortic valve has opened, the volume is suddenly being pushed into the aorta in a jet. First, there is a red, quick push. When there's a quick push, means there is rapid ejection, which means the volume drops rapidly. And then there's a reduced push. And because there's a reduced push, the volume drops gradually. Can you see that? The volume drops gradually. And then you come to the valve closes, the aortic valve closes, and then there is isovolumetric relaxation. So it tapers off. It becomes a flat because the volume is the same. The volume is the same and the muscle is relaxing. So only in a volume graph, you have got to have two taperings, two, two plateaus. One is the isovolumetric relaxation and one is the isovolumetric contraction. At this point, is called as left ventricular and systolic volume. You understand that left ventricular and systolic volume. And ejection fraction means left ventricular and diastolic volume minus left ventricular and systolic volume. Because this is the amount of blood that you are throwing into the aorta. Did you understand that? This is ejection fraction. This part here, the part between phase 3 and 4 is called as ejection fraction. It is the difference between end diastolic volume minus end systolic volume. Is it clear now? So once we have gone past the isovolumetric contraction, a relaxation, once you've gone past between isovolumetric relaxation, the mitral valve opens. And because the mitral valve opens, you enter into phase six, which is rapid filling. So now the volume is increasing, rapid filling. And then because there's equilibrium, there's equilibrium between the pressure of the left ventricle and the left atrium, the volume is starting to taper off. So this is reduced filling. And then you come back to year seven, where suddenly there is a atrial contraction. So there is a little bump in the volume. This goes tapering. And if you follow the next graph, it will go a little bump like this because the atrium has contracted. Did you understand the second graph? Yeah, is the second graph clear? So now this is the first graph. This is the second graph. This is the aortic volume. And aortic volume is all self-explanatory. Okay, it's nothing to worry. It only goes from 80 to 120. Yeah, aortic pressure goes from 80 to 120. And the dichrotic notch, which is a slight increase, slight jump, is because the aortic valve closes. Yeah? So that's what it is. So this is the aortic. So you understand this, this, and this then everything becomes okay. This, which you're seeing A, C, and V with the X and the Y descent is the jugular venous pressure, which is the same as the right atrial pressure. So if you understand jugular venous pressure, A is because of contraction of the aortic, of the atria. Yeah? C is because there's isovolumetric contraction, the mitral valve balloons into the atria. Yeah, because it's a floppy thing, no? The mitral valve is floppy. So when there is isovolumetric contraction, the mitral valve balloons into the atria. So it causes you the second bump. Okay, just like this dichrotic notch here, 
you get this notch because the mitral valve is being pushed into the atria or if you want to measure the right side you can say the tricuspid valve is being pushed into the atria so actually we are looking at right sided pressure so this is because of tricuspid valve being pushed into the atria or mitral valve being pushed into the atria so the c wave of this cycle comes because of the tricuspid valve being pushed into the atria then again because you are ejecting so the right ventricle is now ejecting into the pulmonary artery so this pressure suddenly goes up okay so this is left atrial pressure yeah and then there is you reach the y when the valve closes and the aortic valve op and the mitral valve opens and then you get the x descent the y descent so the y descent is because the mitral valve is open is it clear yes sir yeah yes sir so this is an understanding of this cycle from 1 2 3 and 4 this is all you have to understand this is the most important thing again at this point what has happened somebody tell me what happens here what is opening what is opening aortic valve aortic valve is opening so what sound will you hear there's no sound to hear nothing nothing when the aortic valve opens that time only mitral valve closes so s1 will be there s1 is because of mitral valve closing and aortic valve opening the aortic valve opening does not create the sound but the mitral valve closing creates the sound did you understand that so what is this come on i'm showing first something heart. first heart sound yeah which is now can you place the first heart sound on that cycle 1 to 7 cycle that is the understanding of this what is the second heart sound why does the second heart sound happen sounds come only when valves close yeah so that's all, because they bang against each other and you get the vibration so what is this s2 happening aortic valve closed yeah aortic valve pulmonary yeah yeah so a to p2 So this is sorry somebody said something and i lost it what did you say come on hello say it again whoever said something i don't know what you said i i lost your sound is it clear now or no say yes or no okay now look at the ecg okay look at the ecg why is the p wave there atrial contraction atrial contraction decoralization yeah so it is contracting of the atrium isn't it atrial de when you say depolarization you mean contraction so here there is atrium is contracting so that's the p wave why is the qrs there the ventricular contraction yeah ventricular depolarization yeah okay what what is so this is this clear the p qrs thing is clear What is the T wave there for? So repolarization, ventricular repolarization. Yeah, the ventricle is starting to repolarize. Yeah, but what? Whoever is saying, just if you get cut off, come back in and say your sentence because I cannot. I am only half listening to the sentence. Hello. Okay, nothing being said. so now did you understand this it's in a very simple word it's nothing complicated as long as you understand what's happening at the valve level all of this becomes very 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 clear i'm not here teaching you ecg at this moment just just get it clear i'm not teaching i'm just showing you a correlation on the cardiac cycle where is the p wave where is the qrs where when i do the lecture on ecg i'll go into more details into electrical activity that's not the problem but just understand the correlation of the ecg with relation to the cardiac cycle okay and understand the correlation of the s1 and the s2 that is the important thing the s1 and the s2 where they lie on the cardiac cycle and why do they lie on the cardiac cycle at that stage does it make sense yes okay sir may please yeah who is it uh, sir this is rishabh yes sir 
yeah you have to identify yourself yeah yeah rishabh uh, uh, sir the t wave uh, is falling on uh, uh, almost on the junction of 3 and 4 yeah so uh, shouldn't it be like on the more on the relaxation of the ventricle uh, during the during the dialysis when we do the ecg we will do everything in more detail all right, all right. just a broad understanding of okay, things okay, okay. just the, this is at this moment the more in that i go more people will get confused so okay sir okay. i'm not interested in ecg at the moment i'm more interested in the cardiac cycle i want you to understand the cardiac cycle broadly okay yes sir yes sir just broadly understand the cardiac and then we will go into ecg at a second stage where all these finer defects will change and we'll try and make it better okay yes sir is that okay is that fair is just you. because the more i discuss now the more people will get confused i don't want that okay yes, all right yes, so, so now come to this uh, cycle now i have put everything together on a single slide and i want you to mentally make your picture and give it a name So what is one? Somebody give me one. Okay, who wants to come in? You come in and take this chance to discuss this. So what is happening? I I want somebody like Sundaram to come in who is not a cardiac surgeon. Sundaram, come in and see if you can try and answer some of these. What is one, Sundaram? What do you think is happening? One. One there is atrial contraction. Excellent, excellent. So one is atrial contraction. Yeah. So what is happening in atrial contraction? What is open? the mitral and the tricuspid valves are open and uh, excellent and what is happening this last 15% volume is going last up last 15% of the yeah okay yes, sundaram continue you are doing very well what is two see everything is closed and this is there contracting is, the pressure iso, is increasing there is iso volumetric uh, con iso iso volumetric contraction where all the valves are closed excellent iso volumetric con contraction so all the valves are closed the muscle is contracting volume remains the same but the pressure has gone up you agree so you correlate it here with this look at there there is the pressure going up yeah okay agreed or no yes sir okay what's happening in 3 continue you're doing very well what's happening in 3 in 3 there is a rapid ejection excellent Where rapid ejection the... so what has happened to the valve Where the aortic and the pulmonary valves are open, the mitral and the tricuspid. So the aortic and pulmonary valves suddenly open, and this pressure has overcome this pressure. So this valve is open, and the blood is quickly flowing into the aorta and into the pulmonary artery. So this phase is three, rapid ejection. Yeah, continue. You are doing very well. Tell me phase four. What is happening in phase in four? Phase four. There is a slow ejection phase. Excellent. Where... Reduced ejection. Very good. So this ejection is going down. Reduced ejection. Yeah. And um, what is phase four? In, yeah. In next so that phase, is, there is. So phase five is closure of the aortic valve. Yeah. So when yes. there is closure of the aortic valve, you get the diaphoretic notch. Yes. Agreed or no? Yes, sir. Okay, so you get the diaphoretic notch. Now, what is this phase called as the isovolumetric relaxation? Excellent, isovolumetric relaxation. So this is relaxing. The pressure is dramatically falling down. Here, look at this graph. The pressure is dramatically falling down, coming to baseline. The moment this pressure becomes lower than this pressure, what will happen? there is opening of the mitral and the tricuspid valve Excellent. and there is so there will be what is this uh, called as rapid filling of the ventricle. rapid filling of the left ventricle excellent so when there is rapid filling of the left ventricle the lv pressure now starts to rise yeah so here is the lv pressure starting to rise and then is what is the, the next phase because the pressures are equilibrium continue. are reaching the... slow slow filling of the ventricle reduced filling of the ventricle excellent but diastole is not yet finished yeah so because diastole finishes with one phase one when what happens in phase one is the there is atrial contraction left, the, the last 15 contracts the last 15% excellent. excellent excellent now if a non cardiac surgeon uh, who has not seen cardiac cycle for i think 15 years Uh, honestly i'm pretty certain it's 15 or 20 years and he is able to answer this whole diagram very clearly i think my job is done 
Yeah, I, is that true or not? Sundaram? Yes, sir. Yeah, true, yeah. true. Very when true. was the last time you saw cardiac cycle? Uh, 15 years ago? 20, Nick, yeah, 20 my years first, ago? My first year. First year, and even then first you didn't year. study it for the exam, okay? <laughs> you just hope that this question will not come in the physiology paper. <laughs> no, this was one of my favorite topics. Sir. Oh, it was all right, okay. Then that's fine. But most of us were not like you. We were not studious. No, no, no. no we were no. rubbish, so we didn't know how to do it. Okay, Fitun, Fitun, come back in. Yes, sir. Now, did this make sense to you, Fitun? One, two, oh, yes. three, four, five, yes, six, seven. Did. But most important is one. You have yes. to come back to one. So you have to understand that diastole is not finished. Diastole comes back and this is diastole. This is the end, the start of phase two, what you call, which we call as phase one, is actually the systole. Yes. Okay? Yeah. All right. So now Thanks is it so making so sense? Yes. All right. Thank, Thank you. So now you can you, understand sir. everything else. So yes. during phase three, the ventricle ejects about 60% of its volume. Just one minute, I'll come back to this. Now, Fitun, quickly tell me, explain the volume to me. This pressure, okay? Explain this pressure to me. Okay, what is happening so here? This is... Shall because of the arterial, uh, the arterial so contraction. Last 15%, last so 15%, last 15%, 15%. yes. What yes. is happening So the volume here? will increase. The volume of the left ventricle is increasing. Yeah, what then is this plateau? Here, uh, it will... Because of the isovolumetric contraction, there is no more increase in Excellent. the volume. Excellent. Excellent. So the volume remains the same. What yes. is happening here? Here, because of the rapid ejection, then the volume ah. will decrease. Will be yeah, very into the aorta. So this is a sharp fall. Yes. And then what is this? Uh, here, because of the slow ejection. Slow ejection. Very good. Now, what is this? Uh, here will be the isovolumetric relaxation. All valves are closed, so no volume change. No volume change. Excellent. And what is this? Uh, here again, um, uh, we'll have the rapid filling of the ventricle. Excellent. So suddenly the mitral valve is open and there is rapid yes. filling on the ventricle. And then yes. there is a plateau here, okay? So this yes. plateau is called as what? Uh, that will be the... What is this filling. called as? Reduced filling. Reduced filling, sorry, yeah. This is rapid filling and this is reduced filling. Reduced filling, what, yes. What is this mark? This point or this point? What is this point called as? Which one? I don't... This one, this point, wherever I'm pointing. This arrow, where is the arrow pointing? Uh, left ventricular written... and diastolic volume, yes. Left ventricular and diastolic volume, okay. Yes. What is this arrow? This will be the left ventricular and systolic volume. So the difference between this point and yes. this point is what? Sir, so will it be the stroke volume or the ejection fraction? Ejection fraction. At the moment we'll talk about ejection fraction. It's just okay. We'll come to stroke volume in a minute. Don't worry. Just okay. call it ejection fraction. Make ejection it simple fraction. for yourself. Okay. okay. We can get into more complicated things first. So 60% okay. of that is ejection fraction and the, then the calculation of actual calculation of the ejection fraction is stroke volume divided by end volume and ventricular and diastolic volume okay and then stroke volume is calculated by uh, hang on where is my oh, i have uh, lost but there's one more formula there I, I'll, I'll just i won't say anything more okay this you have understood you've understood this or no have you understood the first heart sound or no yes, i'll sir. just leave the yes, ejection fraction for the minute there's one more formula i need to show you Okay, so this is okay. Are you clear that the first heart sound is because of closure of the mitral valve? Yes. And the tricuspid valve? Okay, it's best heard at the apex. And it's louder in these conditions, okay? The second heart sound, have you understood? Because of closure of the aortic and pulmonary valves. But there could be physiological splitting because of inspiration, okay? So because there's, when you inspire, there is differentiation between the right and the left side, there could be a physiological splitting of the A2P2. Yeah, that is, we know that. And we'll talk about these things in more detail. At this moment, I do not want to get into all of these sounds and other things. I want you to understand cardiac cycle, that's all. Forget the third heart sound. I don't want to discuss third and fourth. So now, please take a pen and paper 
and draw for me the next 10 minutes we will do all the graphs so first draw for me cardiac cycle the pressures in the left ventricle draw an x axis draw a y axis left ventricular pressure graph and then on that i want you to superimpose the aortic pressure graph and i want to i want you to superimpose the jvp that is the right atrial pressure Yeah? Done. So have you got something like this? Something which vaguely looks like this? Or you can have this one. I don't mind whichever one you've got. Okay, I want you to now draw the left and left heart volume. On the same chart below, draw me the left heart volume and mark out which is left volume and diastolic pressure and what is and left heart and systolic volume, not pressure, volume. This is a volume graph. The next chart is next is a volume graph. Is it looking something like this? Or if yes. you want, you can draw this one. I don't mind whichever one you draw. Yes, sir. The second graph. Yeah? Now see if you can draw the right ventricular pressure. Exactly same as the right as the left ventricle, except that the y axis changes from 0 to 25. And if you draw the right ventricular pressure, then please superimpose the pulmonary artery pressure on it. The graph changes because the, the, it's not from 0 to 120, it is from 0 to Yes or no? Wiggly. Yes, sir. And look at your graph and see if it is matching this. It is exactly the same graph as the iota, except the, uh, as the as the left uh, ventricle, except that the the pressure is from 0 to 20, 25. 
Okay. Made sense so far? Leave the coronary blood flow. It's okay. We'll do it a little bit at a little later stage. And leave the ECG. Just can you draw an ECG for me on that graph? Just broadly, where will the P wave lie? Where will the QRS lie? And where will the T lie? You don't have to be factually absolutely accurate, but just broadly, where will the P wave lie? Where will the QRS lie? And where will the T lie? And then just make for me S1 and S2. I don't even want three and four. I just want S1 and S2. Yeah? And now put it all together and this is the graph that comes. Agreed? Now is the funda getting clear? Are you now understanding? And then we'll just quickly go through the right side, the JVP, which is exactly the right atrial pressure. We said A, C, X, Y. A is because of atrial systole. Uh, C is because of bulging of the tricuspid valve into the right atrium during isovolumetric contraction. We've understood that. The V descent is because of the uh, rise in the right atrial pressure before the tricuspid valve opens. And the X descent is because of the tricuspid valve moving down during systole. And the Y descent is because the tricuspid valve is open. Okay. So this is what it is. It's very simple. Nothing difficult. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> Sir, can I just say the coronary flow one more time, please? Is it possible? Uh, yeah, we will do it again. I, I'm not doing the coronary flow at the moment because you will okay. uh, get. Only thing you need to remember is most of the coronary flow is during diastole. Diastole. Yeah. Okay. That's it. So I'll show you the coronary flow. One minute. But I, the more I try to first, I want you to grasp one concept only at the moment okay just grasp yes. the cardiac cycle and then remember that the coronary flow is maximum during diastole okay okay and then then you you will figure it out when you sit with the graph again you will figure it out i don't want to keep talking about it because that will confuse you more yeah thank you okay so this is the left color this is the coronary left and the right color okay so everybody understood this Good, I am happy. Now, I have a whole talk uh, on, uh, on IABP and stuff like that, uh, but I'm quite happy to. Did you guys understand the Swan Gans well? Yes. Yes, sir. I, want to I, I won't repeat the Swan Gans. Okay, so this is the Swan Gans. Yeah, so JVP, right ventricular graph, pulmonary artery graph. And then the bench graph. Okay, that's all. Uh, I don't. Oh, you're not seeing it. Sorry. Unable to see. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was. Uh... This graph. Yeah. So JVP, right ventricle, pulmonary artery, and bench. Yeah. So this is the left atrial. Left atrial pressure right atrial pressure, right ventricular pressure, and pulmonary artery pressure. Exactly the same tracing that you just drew. You drew the right ventricular tracing, no? That's what you, that is what you're seeing. Except that now you're seeing three cycles in one. This is representing three cycles, no? So three beats. Yeah, so that's exactly what we are doing. Okay, so that's it. Is there anything else you guys want clarity on? Um, it's been one hour. Wow. Pretty good. Okay. I won't do this. I won't do this. I won't do this at the moment. Uh, okay. Let me just get this back. And stop that. So you can see my whole screen.
So I have a lot of things uh, here about discussion of about the discussion of cardiac output and cardiac index and stuff like that. Uh, but that I'll I'll leave it for another time. Okay. There's a lot of discussion on stroke volume and ejection fraction and things like that. I wanted to broadly understand concepts rather than go into minute details. I'm, I'm not doing a physiology lecture. I'm just doing a graph. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Any questions? Anything else you want to say?